there, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm really excited to share this video with you today because it is a subject that many of you have asked me about over the years. Every now and then I get comments where people say, you know, I've let myself go. How do I get myself back? And quite honestly, I never knew how to respond to those comments until very recently because I was always kind of beauty motivated, I would say. However, when I came to YouTube when I was 59, before I came to YouTube, I really didn't do that that many things. I mean, the stuff I do now is mostly because that is my job here on YouTube to be your beauty guinea pig. So I do have to try things out and show them to you. And I have to admit that I generally do really enjoy that. It's a really fun thing to do and it is definitely change the amount of makeup that I use. I mean, there's a ton more makeups around here. I think I had maybe five or six makeup products before I came to YouTube and half of them were CoverGirl. I mean, that's how little I was into the beauty realm in a way, although I did always try to do my best over the years. But about two months ago, I went through an experience where all of a sudden I understood what my ladies who say, I've let myself go, how do I get myself back? I actually had a life experience where I learned really from a personal experience, I had that happen to me and I was really afraid I wouldn't be able to get myself back. And so I learned to do some things which did help me rein things in and get back my beauty routines. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things beauty, anti-aging, feeling and looking our best, whether there were 30, 40, 50, 60 like me, or 70, 80, or beyond, then I hope you subscribe to my channel. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that is just a vote to YouTube for more of the same. Okay, let me get into this. And I will tell you that later on in the video, I have some makeup products that I do want to share with you because they're really good. But before I get into that, I will tell you about the main, the main idea behind this video. And that is that at different points in our lives, sometimes we get discouraged or we just get out of our routine. And that happened to me a couple of months ago. And for about the, the next 30 days after that, I really, really struggled because I totally understood what many of you have said about the fact that, you know, I'm letting things go. I really don't care about myself that much anymore. Here is what happened. Well, first, I had a radical shift in my diet. And as those of you who have followed my channel know, I have inside of me probably a 250 pounder waiting to spring free. If given the permission to eat whatever I would want to eat and left to my own devices, I would weigh a lot, lot more than I do now. And I wrestled with food on and off my whole life until I discovered the paleo autoimmune diet or the paleo low carb way of eating. I then went into the keto and it was amazing because I had a little bit of arthritis. In fact, I'd been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and through various means, I had improved my arthritis to where I hardly had any pain, but I still had about 10% of pain left. And so I'd heard that the paleo autoimmune, because it was very low carb, very anti-inflammatory, that that could take away the last bit of my pain. And that is exactly what happened. I went from being a vegetarian for five years to the paleo autoimmune. And within one week of making the switch to low carb eating, my pain was pretty much gone. In fact, it was gone. And I really appreciate the low carb way of eating because I don't have the hunger that I have. When I start eating cakes, pies, cookies, uh, rice, white potatoes, that kind of thing, high carb things, then all of a sudden all bets are off and I'm gaining weight. I'm thinking about food all the time. Food rules me. And when I'm on a low carb diet, I really don't think about food that much and I am able to naturally keep my weight low. So what happened is, for those of you who followed my channel, you also know that I've suffered from IBS for a lot of years. Every now and then I think I've got it under control, but then I realized, no, it was just certain foods that I wasn't eating. And uh, basically, you know, it, it all goes back to problems again. However, about two months ago, I found a fabulous author who wrote a great book about IBS and she has a website. And if you're interested in learning basically the cure for IBS, at least as far as my experience with it, please let me know that information down in the video because I would love to make a video about my IBS triumph, I would say. But basically what happened is I got her food list. She has a free food list. And basically it was very different from the way I was eating because I was keto, which is very high fat. I was eating beef, I was eating pork, I was eating lots of bacon. I had a what I eat in a day video, which horrified a lot of you because I'm very, very high fat. 
And I realized through reading her food list that I shouldn't be doing beef, I shouldn't be doing pork, the bacon was out, high fat was out, I basically needed to be doing chicken or fish and vegetables, fruits, but also carbs. You know, she has you eating a lot of rice, a lot of potatoes, even breads. And even though I'm gluten-free, I was starting to eat gluten-free breads. And at first, I really enjoyed that diet. And I have to say, within about five days of starting that IBS-controlled diet, my IBS was pretty much gone. I mean, it was amazing. And I had the problem with the runs. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. And I struggled with that for probably the last five or six years. And I was so happy to have found a diet an eating plan in which I no longer had that problem. I mean, it was fantastic in terms of the final result of it, which was a better functioning GI system. But unfortunately what that did is introducing all those carbs, I love them. I was having mashed potatoes at dinner, mashed potatoes and gravy. I was eating rice all the time. I was eating gluten-free bagels with butter because I wasn't as low fat as they said, but I still didn't have any problems with it. So anyway, although my IBS was under control, all of a sudden my eating was out of control. My joints started to hurt again because I was getting inflammation in my body due to all the carbs. And so I was dealing with that. And it was kind of like, you know, do I have to choose between being a voraciously hungry overeater or someone who suffers from IBS? So I had that going on. Also, I've been lifting weights, very heavy weights for about the past year and a half, uh, two years, year and a half to two years, somewhere in there. And I had gotten in my workouts and I do them every Monday through Friday morning. I would get up at like 4.30 and do an hour long workout, weight workout. I realized that I was hating lifting weights. I was dreading picking up the heavy weights and putting them on my shoulders and doing squats. I just got to where every day it was an effort almost to get through every exercise. So I was really hating the exercises. And as luck would have it, Alan and I went on a beachy vacation together to Costa Rica, which was a week uh, in Costa Rica. And so I thought, well, I'll just use that as my rest week because you do like eight weeks on, one week off. I'll do that as my rest week and hopefully I'll come back from that vacation rejuvenated to do my weights. Well, what happened is I loved not doing the weights during the vacation, but I came back in town and I could not make myself start my weight routine again. So... Not only was I high carb, eating everything in sight, I was feeling kind of lousy because you get kind of sleepy when you have too many carbs. I was having no energy. I was not lifting weights. I was getting pudgy around the edges, pudgy around my face, pudgy around my, especially my abs were getting very, very pudgy. And I just didn't really care. I got to the point that I didn't care really about overeating. I didn't seem to care about not exercising. I knew I should, but I couldn't push myself hard enough to make myself go lift those heavy weights again. I was sleeping in, you know, every morning. I mean, I work still, so I wasn't sleeping in that late, but I was certainly, you know, not getting up at 4.30. And I just basically lost my motivation to really try on myself at all. I even got to where I wasn't picking outfits ahead I was wearing the same thing a couple of times a week just because it was easy. I was just kind of losing it. I guess I was letting myself go is what it boiled down to. And even my husband noticed. I didn't really have energy to do much anymore. I think there was some depression involved in it. And in the past, I'd been pretty good about you know having to-do lists, things on my to-do list, but I wasn't doing any of that. I was you know waking up late in the morning, not exercising, not caring about what I wore to work, going to work. You know, I would put makeup on, but you know, sometimes it was very hurried and I didn't really take care in terms of the makeup. I would come home, we would eat our high carb dinner. I would be loving those mashed potatoes. And then we would, you know, basically go to sleep on the couch practically watching the latest TV show, which I do like TV shows. You know, that's, I'm not putting that down and I still do that. So basically what happened is about two weeks ago, I realized that I was becoming like a lot of those commenters, those ladies who said, I've let myself go. How do I get out of it? And they'd ask me in earnest and I never really knew. So this is the answer to how I've gotten out of this, how I've gotten back on track within the last two weeks. And it has been night and day difference. It is wonderful. And I realized that everything in life is a habit. 
And if you have good habits, you have good outcomes. And if you have habits of letting yourself go, of you know wearing the holy t-shirt you know three days a week and not washing your hair and not taking a shower much that is a habit those are our habits which do produce a kind of i've let myself go result but by the same token you can decide the areas that you want to conquer i kind of thought you know what's the problem here look at the problem what do i want to be in another year and and what are the good habits i need to form to get there and i wouldn't recommend that you start this with a lot of different areas of your life but take one area of your beauty life and decide that you're going to kind of attack that as a habit and for me it was getting back to working out in the morning because when i work out i also do my new face routine and also my face yoga routine and because I quit working out, I was not doing any of that. So not only was my body kind of getting pudgy and I was, you know, having no energy, feeling no energy. Also, my face was really starting to go because I wasn't using the new face and I was not doing face yoga anymore. So here's what I did to develop the habit. And this is what I would recommend to you. I've just got my little iPhone here and <laughs> there's YouTube videos. But what I did was I downloaded this little app and, and I'll try to show you what it looks like. There it is. And that is the Google task list. It's called the Google task list and it's absolutely free. So what I did is I decided that I needed to create some good habits in my life. And so what you do with this little free app is you create to-do lists or habit lists of things that you want to add to your life. And in my case, I had not quit the skincare. I was still doing my morning and evening skincare. So I don't put this on my list, my to-do list every day. But about two weeks ago, I started this and it has really helped me. I have a couple of to-do lists in here. The first is called daily good choices. And that's what I called my daily habit list to get me back on track with beauty and health. And then I have a happy to-do list. That's my to-do list, but I call it happy to-do list. And each list does a separate thing. On my daily choices list, my daily good choices list, here it is for today. Get up at 5 a.m. and then you check it off when you've done it. Pray and read Jesus Calling because I wasn't even doing my prayers and I really needed some more spiritual fuel to my life, I guess. So the Jesus Calling is a great book there. Uh, three, drink glass of water before I work out. Four, do Suzanne Summers Thigh Master. And I've not been telling you about that, but I've been doing that for probably six months. It, it's those two old machines that have been around since the 80s. The little, you know, press your thigh together and pull your thigh apart machines. And they're really good. I need to do a video about that. Let me know if you'd like to see my results on that because I think they were pretty good. I do 150 crunches. I do straddle stretches, which is basically where you just put your legs out in a V and you lean forward, then you lean over to one side, lean over to the other side. It just feels good to stretch out. I really like that. And then I do my face yoga, which takes about 10 minutes. Then I do my new face. Uh, and then basically I do power 90. And that was a decision that I made to change my workouts because getting to the point in my weightlifting where I hated what I was doing that just could not continue. You can't make yourself do something you absolutely hate, even though you know you should do something close to that. And long ago, I did Power 90 with my husband. I was probably in my 40s, but it really, really helped. And Power 90, I will link the videos below because you can get them for free on YouTube now. But basically, they're 30 minutes a day, and I realized I could not continue getting up so early every morning because I was exhausted. So now I get up at 5 a.m. and it takes me half an hour to do this little Power 90 workout. And Power 90 on, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it has a video called Sweat. No, Sculpt. Sculpt. And it has hand weights and you do a lot of squats. And so it is kind of weight intensive, but it's very pleasant, very nice to do. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I do the Power 90 video called Sweat, which is a good cardio workout. And so I really do like that and I'm really enjoying the change. I may go back to the heavy weightlifting in the future, but right now I'm really enjoying the Power 90 and I'm going to see how my body handles it because in the past it was really good on my bod. So we'll see how it works. And then basically for the rest of the day, I just have drink a glass of water at lunch and take my supplements. Ooh, I forgot today, I better do that. And then drink a glass of water before dinner. I wasn't drinking enough water. And then I have select my outfit for the day, for the next day. And I do that every night before I go to sleep. And then I have some things that I just do on a sporadic basis and you can program them in here. Basically, I put it on the to-do list 
wash hair and deep condition hair, I have that scheduled for Mondays. And then on Friday, I have wash hair, but I just deep condition my hair on Mondays. But I wasn't doing that because I was letting things go. And then in terms of skincare, as those of you who follow my channel know, I've been using the Nip Fab Glycolic uh, wipes, I guess, and they really work. And here it says use them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then Tuesday and Thursday, I've just been using a little cosmetic depth, a 0.25 depth derma roller on my skin before I do my skincare. And so these are things that I had largely let go, but this little app, the Google Task List is what it's called, Google Task List, is really helping me establish good habits again. Basically, as you do each item, you can't really see that, you just put a check mark off on that little box and then it, uh, it goes away. And if you want, say, if you don't deep, deep condition your hair today, you can go in there and you can move it from Friday to Monday and then it will show up on your Monday to-do list or whatever. I think I just told you wrong on that. The Google task list is a great way to get yourself back on track with regard to beauty and health. And the other list that I have in here is called the happy to-do list. And I created this happy to-do list because I had not been getting the simplest of things done. It would take me days to call a doctor and get a scheduled appointment made or something like that. And this is my happy to-do list for today. And again, I don't expect I'll do all of these things today, but I can always you know, click them and move them to the next day if I want to do that. But I have a 15 minute clean of the makeup room. And that's where I set my cell phone timer for 15 minutes and clean up this makeup room. And it's kind of a mess, so it needs it. Then I have decide on the topic for my next four videos. I need to do that. I have do laundry, clean out purse, clean off the cabinet in the garage. We got the whole garage clean last weekend, but there's one cabinet that my husband will not seem to clean off. It's frustrating. Put away the patio cushions from the patio downstairs. Set up the basement photo studio. And that is something that I've had the pieces for from Amazon for three months and I haven't done it yet. We have a spare bedroom in the basement and I decided it would be nice to have a place to do wardrobe videos. So I got one of those back screens that are white and I got a clothing rack and uh, a light down there so I can more easily do those types of videos. And the last thing is my husband has some big car pictures that he wants to put up in the garage. And so I have that on the list to get that accomplished. So anyway, this Google task list is a great way to get your life organized and to get yourself back on track. And if you have a lot of different areas, if you're overweight, you're not paying attention to your clothing or your hair, you're not wearing makeup, you're hardly doing skincare, then if I were you, I would not start with all of those things. I would start with one area or, you know, either start with one area and create your list and start doing that every day. It feels so good to check those items off. Or if you have like maybe three areas, choose one or two areas from each one to get yourself started in developing those new and better habits. So if any of you have been where I was, then I hope you'll share the information in the comment section below the video, especially if you have ways that you combated that or if you'd like to make a new resolution now to clean up your act and make a better you in the tomorrow than you are today, then I hope you'll share that wish or goal too. At the start of the video, I promised that I'd share with you some of the makeup items that I have on. The first one is this Fantastic Palette Physician's Formula All-Star Face Palette, and it is the Physician's Formula Faves that people have bought over the years. And look at that, I absolutely love it. It has two wonderful colors of bronzer, and I do have them on now. Actually, which one do I have? I think I have this one on, this matte bronzer. This has a little bit of a glow to it. This is a fantastic highlighter, which is really glittery. And I put just a little of that on my cheeks and a little bit of that down my nose. There we go. It's a little bit scary. Oh, it's very, very glowy, but you know, I'm kind of in the mood for that right now. And then you can kind of mix it with this little bit of a highlighter here. It's called Petal Glow. Look how pretty that is. Oh, that is just beautiful. I love that. You can also use that one separately. Then here's a great face powder, which really is a great face powder. And this is a fantastic little blush. And look at that. And that is what I have on my face right now. I love this. And I think it was $12, something like that. I'll link it below. Well, let me tell you what I have on my eyes. And I've shared this before because I absolutely love it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyeshadow Stick in 
what is it? Oh, Champagne Diamonds. And basically it's just a little cream colored stick there, very glittery. And I just have it on the top of my existing eyeshadow, which is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, which I love, but this is over it. Love that. Gives you a little glow. Then on my lips, I have this Revlon lipstick in the color 004, and it's a matte. It's called Wild Thoughts. Wild Thoughts. And it's just a little pinky, rosy nude, and I really think it's pretty. I'll hit it on again. This one I need is more lipstick. Ooh, I think that is super, super pretty. And then I have my all-time favorite um, Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the color Nude Entrance, just around the outside. Very nice, thin, natural-looking lip line. Then I have the NYX Butter Gloss in Cream Brulee. No, this is Fortune Cookie. I like Fortune Cookie and Cream Brulee, and this is Fortune Cookie. And just a little bit on the center of your lips to make them pop. And if you're feeling like you need something to pep up your look, sometimes buying a few new makeup items is just what the doctor ordered. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day at the end of my video. And this time, whoops, this time I'm reading from The Good Word, which says 50 scriptural insight cards, The Good Word. And I've been using these more. Let's see, let's go ahead and hopefully choose a wonderful scripture to think about for today. This one is about faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And that is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And friends, I absolutely love this card. And of course, I love it because it is God's word. But basically what the scripture is reminding us of is that faith is something we really need in our lives. You know, that is something that when I was letting things go, I didn't have a lot of faith in myself. I didn't have a lot of faith in anything. I was just kind of depressed. And I really had to kick myself up in a spiritual sense as well and really get back to praying, to reading God's word, and to thinking about positive things like faith, hope, and love, and adding more of those things into my life. So friends, just for today, let's remember the importance of faith in our lives. And you know, when I was at my down point a couple of months ago, faith was something that I was kind of short of. And I realized that I really needed to ask Jesus into my heart even more, to ask him to improve my walk with him, to help me feel his presence in my life, and to improve the level of faith that I had in my life. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.